Welcome to YouTube Excel Finance Trick number 16. Hey, if you want to download by download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link. Download the workbook Finance Tricks 1 to 17. Hey, in this trick number 16, we are going to plan our retirement from basically birth all the way to death. We're going to see how much to put in each month, how much we get on the day we retire, and how much we can withdraw for our retirement. Hey, let's first start out our monthly payment. These are going to be input variables. Let's just say we're going to deposit 200 bucks at the end of each month. Now, how many years? If we are young, like 20 years old, and we're going to work till we're 65, that's 45 years. Let's just start off with 30. Let's say we're going to do that for 30 years. Hey, how many months equals that 30 times 12? Since this is all going to be in months, that number, number of months is not going to change. So we can just type that into the formula. Our annual rate, we have to make some sort of assumption here. Uh, the past, uh, from, the, from finance history, it suggests that over long periods of times like this, you can earn between 8 and 13%, 8 being quite conservative. So we'll be very conservative. I'll type 0 0.08 here. The monthly rate equals that annual rate divided by our 12 months. Now, let's figure out our future value. So this is the first function we're going to use. We have some input variables here with a couple formulas. And now we want to calculate our future value. So on the day we retire, how much do we have? Equals FV, open parenthesis. Now remember, there's two tricks for financial functions. you got to have the same unit for everything. So us, it's all in months. And cash flow matters. So if it's coming into your wallet, it's a plus. If it's out of your wallet, it's a minus. Now, what's the rate? Hey, period rate, that's going to be our month. Comma, what's our NPER? Certainly not years. It's months because everything's in months. Comma, the payment. Now we got to be careful here. When you send the $200 at the end of each month to the bank, to the retirement fund, to whatever investment vehicle you have, is that going out of your wallet or into your wallet? Forget it. On the day you send the money in, that's going out of your wallet. So it's going to be a negative. Boop. Comma. Now, present value, we don't have anything in the account on the day we invest it. I'm going to backspace. The type here is always by default zero payment at the end of the month. So we're just going to leave it off. Close parentheses. And there it is. Wow, we're only going to have $298,000 on the day we retire. Probably we'd want to uh, increase, ch change some of the input variables. Now, remember, this is all estimating, right? Oh, um, and that's what you have to do when you're planning way into the future like this. But maybe over the uh, 30 years, you'll start off at 100 and go up to, to you know 400 or 500. I'm going to change that to 250 bucks. Oh, look, that already jumped too much. And this is a pretty conservative rate. Now, history is no perfect predictor of what's going to happen in the future. So, uh, But past finance tells us that being really conservative, even 10% over a 30-year period, we would be able to earn that. But don't forget, just because uh, we've earned that much in the past doesn't mean over the next 30 years we're guaranteed that. But for estimating purposes, that's pretty good. So there it is, nearly a half a million. And that's still a conservative rate. Now, the question is, how much do we get to uh, pull out each month during our retirement? Well, here it is. We were planning to the future, right? And then this is in the future. We have this. But now, switch gears. On the day you retire, all of a sudden, you're getting this amount. Are you going to spend that half a million dollars on the day you retire? No way. You're going to leave it in the bank and pull out a little bit each period. So here we go. We're going to do our input variables to calculate our monthly payment, which is going to be how much we withdraw each month. Now, on the day you retire, uh, how much do you have in the bank? That's going to be our present value. Well, equals this. Enter years. Now you have to decide how many years you're going to live. If you re uh, retire when you're 65, so we'll say uh, 35 years we're going to live. Months, um, this is total months, so equals. There is our years times 
12. Again, that number shouldn't be typed into a formula if it changes. But for us, this is all month. And the number of months in a year is not going to change anytime soon. Enter. Annual rate. Now, we could be a little bit more conservative here. Because in retirement, you've got to be a little bit more conservative. We could e even say uh, 0 0.07. Notice that is pre-formatted. It comes up as a percent. Monthly rate equals that annual rate divided by 12. Enter. Now we get to do our PMT. But I want to actually click in this cell and type um, leave to kids. Because I'm gonna, we're going to leave some to the kids. Let's just say um, $250,000. OK, now we can do our monthly PMT. This is how much we get to retire, equals PMT, open parentheses. The rate is going to be our monthly rate. The NPER, that's the total number of months. The present value. Now, we got to think about this. This is a cash flow. So we need to think, on the day we retire, although it comes into our wallet from our retirement account, we immediately give it back to the bank and say, here, no, you keep it. We're going to make this as an investment. So this is a minus because it's going out of your wallet. Now, comma, now here's future value. Now, this is what we want to leave to our kids. And now we want this coming back into our wallet. So this is going to be a positive. And I'm going to click right there. The type, uh, comma, you either put a 0 for end of the period or 1 for the beginning of the period. We could do one because we want to make this withdrawal right at the beginning of the period. Enter. No way. Now, how does that work? We get $3,000 a month, and we're still going to leave $200,000 to our kids? Now, let's say you want $4,000 a month or something, something like that. Let's leave only $200,000. Oh, that still doesn't work. Oh, I'm going to go back up to $250,000. You actually could use goal seek there and uh, figure out exactly how this uh, could equate to uh, $4,000 uh, by changing this input. But we're not going to do that right here. We're going to actually go over. And now we're going to figure out amount that we've put in. What's the total amount that we've put into this? Hey, we just do a little common sense here. Hey, equals this 250 bucks times the total number of times we put the 250 bucks in. What? 90K, 90,000? And I'm getting this uh, 565,000? That, that's pretty amazing. Now, amount taken out. Now, here's a, what are we taking out? Hey, equals our PMT times the number of uh, periods that we took it out plus whatever amount we have left over at the end. You've got to be kidding me. And the difference here is called what? <laughs> Compound interest. There it is. So that's the full retirement plan from uh, beginning to your working life, your uh, retirement life, even leaving some for your kids, and then figuring out how much you put in, how much you took out. And the difference is compound interest. All right, we'll see you next Excel finance trick.